Hey guys, part six on my little portable day hike type survival kit. This is what it looks like in a little dry sack. Now you could pack this different ways. You know, you could pack it thinner and taller or whatever you want to do. This is just the way I put everything in there as compact in the bottom as I could and wrapped it up. I could have gotten maybe a little more air out of this. I apologize, I do not have a small little electronic scale to see how much this weighs, but a pound, maybe, maybe a little over that, maybe a pound and a quarter, I don't know. Uh, I guess I should get one of those electronic scales because people will be asking me about weights. So, dry bag in blaze orange, just so you can find it. I would recommend you keep this in the upper part of your kit. Don't let this thing fall to the bottom. I'd rather be digging for my mess kit, or even digging for my poncho, than having to dig for something while I'm bleeding out or somebody next to me is bleeding out. So, here's the kit, very lightweight. Show you the sides of it. Again, you can pack this differently. Uh, here's almost everything in it. I did not put the ice pack in it because I just don't feel that's necessary, in my opinion, that you could put it in there. I'm going to show you how much extra capacity you've got here in a second. So, this thing's wrapped up real tight. Here's the whole bag, unwrapped. You see that? The gear is down here. So, you've still got almost half the capacity of this thing left for other stuff. So, if you just wanted to wrap this a few times tight, there's a lot of room up there. Obviously, if you have other personal medications you take, blood pressure medications, diabetes meds, insulin, syringes, um, just any number of things, you still have plenty of room in there for that for you personally and anything else you want to put in there, including the cold pack, which I just didn't throw in there. So, here's the kit. Um, let me pull it out. This is the dental floss, and again, I would not carry this much, but I just threw it in there because it fit easily. Toilet paper. At least one little pad of it. Again, I like having that just because I'm paranoid. Bandana. Again, you don't have to have that in this kit. You're probably going to have a bandana somewhere else in your kit. But if you don't, keep it in here. That's fine. Trauma shears. I'm a huge fan of these. You may not be. That's fine. Next, combat casualty blanket. Four inch ace wrap with little fasteners. Bottle. Uh, this one's empty just because I haven't put anything in it. You could put isopropyl in this for your wound care. You could put aloe vera. Just any number of things you could put in this. So you don't necessarily need one this big. You could use a little uh, one of those little small bottles for mouthwash and stuff that you get in your little travel kits. Little small 1.2 ounce little ones. I have that in the other room. Should have brought it and I did not. So anyway, this is a lot of liquid. So I'd use this for isopropyl. Maybe that smaller one for aloe vera. Alcohol gel. A lot of uses for that. That's going to be for wound care just as well as the isopropyl like we talked about. Next, we've got our quick clock trauma kit pack in there. The biggest piece of our kit. And finally, the last part of the kit is our little small wound care kit and all that. I should have some rubber bands around this. I just did not add them just for this video. I didn't want to fool with it. But I would put some rubber bands around this. You can use rubber bands for stuff. You can use that to secure you know, things in place, uh, wrappings and stuff on your arm and all that. Would I recommend that necessarily compared to the duct tape in this? No. But, eh, you know, having three or four rubber bands around this is going to keep it from popping open. And there you go. So, let's pop it open. There's all your stuff. I'm not going to talk about everything, of course, because check my other videos. Uh, antibiotics, pills, Benadryl, allergy meds, and all your other various tablets, your Alka-Seltzer, uh, your aspirin, your alcohol prep pads, and all your bandages and 2x2s and all that with your 4x4s and extra 2x2 two two in here. This is going to do it, guys. This is more than enough to get you by in the short term if you know how to use it. Uh, I'm going to do another video, the, the final video of this, talking about what you can do with this kit and how useful that's going to be. And I'm going to base it on one of those little first things I read, this little booklet, this little first aid guide that came in that junky little John, uh, Johnson & Johnson first aid kit. I'm just going to go through that in the next video just so we can talk about do we have all our bases covered or do we have them covered enough? Okay, you're never going to have all your bases covered perfectly because again, if you did, you'd stay at home in a bunker somewhere with lots of gear, a doctor, and some nurses, and a surgical team. But uh, this is enough, guys. I don't know if you can see it all on the camera, but uh, all this fits in this bag with plenty of room to spare. Again, you could also throw in the ice pack if you wanted to, the instant ice pack, instant cold pack here. Yeah, that's fine if you want it. Dealer's choice. This is going to add a good bit of weight. This is 
reasonably heavy compared to the rest of the kit. So, anyway, there it is, guys. My wilderness kit. My portable wilderness kit for short stay hikes and all that type stuff. MD Prepper, out.